Hi, my name is Jeremy Peel. I'm a training officer for ODOT District 1 out of Lima. Um, just here today to show you a pre-trip inspection on a truck. Uh, my Part of my job is to train people that want to be employees with ODOT. Uh, requirements for an HT are that they have to have a Class B CDL with air brake and tanker endorsements. A lot of people think that the pre-trip inspection uh, is the roughest part of obtaining a CDL license. I'm going to show you today that it's not really that hard and if you do things the way that I'm showing you today you should have no problem in passing your CDL pre-trip inspection on a Class B vehicle. The pre-trip I'm going to show you today is on a international workhorse. I think this is a 2013 model. Uh, things could be a little different depending on year, style of truck, model of truck. Uh, but I'll show you for this vehicle here. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to walk up to the vehicle. We're going to look underneath, make sure we have no puddles of oil, transmission fluid, uh, no coolant leaking or puddled up underneath the truck. Next thing I do is unlatch the hood on this side so when we get to the other side, we can open it. We're also going to check our turn signals, uh, both here and on the fender, to make sure they are the proper color of amber and that they are not cracked or broken. We're also going to check our headlights. Uh, make sure they're clear in color and that they are not cracked or broken. As well as our clearance lights across the top. They are amber in color. They are not cracked or broken. And the marker light on the mirror is also amber in color, not cracked or broken. We're now going to move to the passenger side of the truck. The only thing that we need to inspect on the passenger side is anything that would be different or not on the driver's side of the truck. So I'm going to unlatch my hood on this side. So I'm going to check my exhaust since it's on this side of the truck and not on the other side. I'm going to make sure it's securely mounted. It is not cracked, bent, or broken. There are no rust or soot marks which would indicate that we could have a leak. I'll now open the hood. Our coolant reservoir is on this side of the truck so we are also going to make sure that it is securely mounted. It is not cracked, bent, or broken and is also not leaking. All of my hoses are tight and it is filled to the proper level between hot and cold. We're also going to check our alternator, which is down in here. We're going to make sure that it is securely mounted. It is not cracked, bent, or broken. All the wires are in place and they are not cut or frayed. We do need to mention that it is belt driven as well. From there, we'll follow our hose off of our radiator down into our water pump. It is securely mounted, it is not cracked, bent, or broken, and it as well is not leaking. And we need to let the examiner know that it is also belt driven. Different models could have a direct drive or a gear drive, uh, driven water pumps. At the same time, we'll check our belt for any excessive play. There should not be more than three quarters of an inch of play on our belts. And while we're on this side of the truck, we'll also check all of our hoses and all of our wires to make sure they are securely connected, they're not cracked, bent, or broken, or not leaking. On this side of the truck, we're going to check our oil. We're going to pull the dipstick out. We're going to wipe it off, stick it back in, pull it back out, check the level to make sure it's between add and full. We do not have to actually pull it out. We just have to explain what we are doing. We're also going to check our transmission fluid in the same way. We're going to pull it out, wipe it off, put it back in, pull it back out, check the level to make sure it's between hot and cold. We're also going to check our power steering reservoir to make sure it's securely mounted, it is not cracked, bent, or broken, and it is between minimum cold, maximum hot. We'll follow the hose, it's very hard to see, we'll follow the hose off of the power steering reservoir down to our power steering pump. We're going to make sure that it is securely mounted, it is not cracked, bent, or broken, and it is also not leaking. And we also need to explain to the examiner that it is gear driven. Right in front of that is our air compressor. It is also securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, and it is not leaking any air, and it is as well gear driven. Next I go into our steering components. We're going to look at our gearbox. We're going to make sure that it is securely mounted, not cracked, bent, broken, or leaking. It takes us into our pitman arm, which is here, and our drag link, which is here. We're going to make sure those are securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. The castle nut is in place with a keeper pin. 
From there, we go to our front and rear spring mounts. Make sure they're securely mounted. They're not cracked, bent, or broken. We'll also check our leaf springs. Make sure they are securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. They are stacked nice and straight and there are none missing. From there, we'll go into our U-bolts, which are here and here. Make sure those are securely mounted. They're not cracked, bent, or broken. And there are nuts on the bottom of those. Those also need to be secured. From there, we can go into our shock absorber. Securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. And it is well not leaking. From there, we can go into our air line. We can make sure that it is securely mounted, not cracked, bent, broken, or leaking. Brings us into our brake chamber, which is securely mounted, not cracked, broke, bent, or leaking. Then we got our push rod and our slack adjuster. Make sure those are securely mounted. They are not cracked, bent, or broken. The keeper pins are in place with keepers on the ends. And then we also need to explain that we would check for slack on those. So uh, with the wheels chalked and the parking brake released, we would pull against our slack adjuster and we should have no more than one inch of travel. Behind our dust plate here, we have our brake drums and linings. We're gonna check to make sure they are securely mounted. They are not cracked, bent, or broken. We're also gonna check our shoes to make sure that they are not worn dangerously thin to less than a quarter of an inch. That brings us to our tire. We're gonna check the inside, the top, and the outside of the tire for five things. We're gonna check for abrasions, bulges, and cuts. We're also gonna check our tire depth, which should be a minimum of 430 seconds. And then we're gonna check our inflation of our tire as well with a tire gauge to make sure it's properly inflated. While we're here, we'll check our valve stem, make sure it's securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, and that there is a metal cap in place. Brings us into our rim. We're gonna check our rim to make sure it is securely mounted, it is not cracked, bent, or broken, and that there are no illegal welds anywhere around the rim. We're gonna check our lug nuts, make sure they're all present, they're all securely mounted, they're not cracked, bent, or broken. There are no shiny threads or rust streaks, which would indicate that we could have a loose lug nut. We're also gonna check our hub seal here Make sure all of our bolts are in place. It's securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. We're also going to check to make sure it's filled to the proper level between minimum and maximum. At this point, I'm now going to close the hood of the truck. I'm going to latch my strap on this side. And I'm going to ask the examiner that when they go around to the other side to get into the truck for a little while, if they could latch the other side for me. Check my mirror, make sure it's securely mounted, it's not cracked, bent, or broken. I'm also going to check my door. I'm going to make sure it opens and closes freely, and I'm going to check to make sure my hinges are securely mounted. From there, I'm going to check my steps getting into the truck, make sure they're securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, and that they will hold my weight. I will check my fuel tank, make sure it is securely mounted, not cracked, bent, broken, or leaky. I'm also going to make sure that my fuel cap is on tight. I'll check my fuel straps on both sides here to make sure they are securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, and that there are no shiny areas on either side of the strap, which would indicate that one of them could be loose. From there, I'm going to open up the door. Before climbing into the vehicle, I'm going to point out my three safety items, one being the fire extinguisher, make sure it is securely mounted, it is fully charged and properly rated. I also have three reflective triangles which are stowed away underneath the passenger seat. And I would also inform the examiner that I would have one spare electrical fuse for every size that this truck takes. This truck does not take fuses, it takes circuit breakers. At this point, we would ask the examiner to go around to the other side of the truck to get up inside of the truck to do our in-cab inspection and our brake check. I do that part of the pre-trip at this point. Uh, you are limited to a half an hour to do the pre-trip examination and not doing the air brake test or not doing it properly is an automatic failure. So I like to get in at this point, get that out of the way so that we do not run out of time. And then ask the examiner when she goes around to the other side, if they could uh, latch the hood on the other side for you as well. We're now inside the cab of the vehicle. 
First thing we're going to do is we're going to pull our seat belt out. We're going to look for any cuts or frays on the seat belt. And we're going to make sure that it latches and unlatches properly. Next thing I like to do is check my mirrors or my glass all the way around. I'm going to check the glass to make sure there's no cracks or damage to it and that there are no illegal stickers present on my uh, windshield. Now I'm going to go to my mirrors. I'm going to make sure they are properly adjusted for me. They're securely mounted and they are not cracked or broken. Next step is I'm going to do a safe start. I'm going to make sure there's nothing underneath my pedals. My transmission is in neutral and my parking brake is set. So I will now start the vehicle. As soon as I start the vehicle, I want to let the examiner know that the ABS light has come on and gone off, indicating that my ABS system is functioning properly. I'm also going to let them know that my oil pressure came up immediately to the proper operating range and that my water temperature is slowly rising and will not overheat. I'm also going to check my amp meter to make sure that I'm registering between 12 and 14 volts. And I'm also going to check my air brake gauges to make sure that they are slowly rising and that they top out somewhere between 120 and 130 PSI. From there, I go into my heater and defroster. I'm going to make sure that both the heat and defroster are functioning correctly. I'm going to come back to the other side and now I'm going to check my indicators on my dash. I'm going to turn my headlights on to make sure that my dash lights are working properly. I'm going to check my bright light indicator to make sure it's functioning. I'm also going to check my left turn signal, my right turn signal, and my four-way flashers. From there I'm going to check my windshield wipers and my washers. Make sure they're functioning. Now I'm going to check my air horn and my city horn. We're now going to perform our parking brake test. So with our brakes applied, we're going to put the vehicle into drive. We're going to tug against our parking brake to make sure it holds the vehicle. We'll then put it back into neutral. We're going to do our service brake check now. So we're going to release our parking brake, put the vehicle into drive. We're going to pull forward about five to 10 feet, apply the service brake to make sure it holds. And we're also going to explain that our steering wheel did not pull left or right. Our service brake is working properly. At this point, we are going to start our air brake check. This is the most important part of your pre-trip inspection. If you do not do this in the proper order or um, at all, it is an automatic failure. So we're going to put the vehicle into neutral. And we're going to shut the truck off, leaving our parking brake released. We're going to turn the truck back to the accessory position. And we're going to explain we have a full tank of air and we're now going to press and hold our service brake for one minute and we should not lose more than three psi in that one minute you may have to hold it for the full minute but if you ask the examiner if they would like for you to hold it they may not make you wait the whole one minute so you would ask the examiner would you like for me to hold most of the time they'll let you continue at that point you're going to pump your brakes down and explain that somewhere around 60 PSI, you will get an audible and a visual warning indicating that you have low air pressure. We have our audible and our visual warning indicating low air pressure. We would continue fanning our brakes down till we get somewhere between 20 and 30 PSI and our parking brake should set. Our parking brake has set. We are now done with our air brake portion of the test. All right, we are now done with the in-cab inspection of the vehicle. We would ask the examiner to get out to physically check our lights on the front and rear of the vehicle. Next thing we do is we check our lights. 
We're going to ask the examiner to check our headlights, our bright lights. We're going to check our left turn signal and the one on the side of the truck, which could be on the fender or the door. Check our right turn signal and the one on the fender or the door. We're going to check our four-way flashers. We're going to make sure that the ones on the fender or the door work as well. And then we're also going to ask her to check the clearance lights across the top of the truck to make sure those are working properly and the marker lights on our mirrors. At that point, we'll then ask the examiner to go to the back of the vehicle to check the lights on the back of the truck. And on their way back, we would ask them to check our clearance lights along the side of the vehicle. On the rear of the vehicle, we need to check that our tail lights are working properly. Our brake lights are working. Left turn signal, right turn signal, emergency flashers, and we would also ask to check the three red clearance lights in the back of the truck. We'll now check our drive shaft, make sure it is securely mounted, it's not cracked, bent, or broken, it is also not twisted. We would check our U-bolt joints on the drive shaft to make sure they are securely mounted. They look like they have been properly greased. Then come back and check the frame on the truck to make sure it is not cracked, bent, or broken, and none of the welds are broken. Moving towards the back of the truck, we're going to check our catwalk. We're going to make sure that it's securely mounted, is not cracked, bent, or broken. We're going to check our reflector to make sure it's the proper color of amber, it is not cracked or broken. And our clearance light is also amber in color, it is not cracked or broken. We'll check our reflective striping all the way down the truck to make sure it is not ripped or torn. When we get to the back of the vehicle, we'll check our red clearance light. Make sure it's the proper color of red since it is within 18 inches of the back of the truck. It is not cracked or broken. As well as our reflector. It is also red because it is within 18 inches of the back of the truck and it is not cracked or broken. We're now going to get into the rear suspension of the vehicle, which is almost identical to the front. Uh, we're going to check our front and our rear spring mounts. To make sure they're securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. We're also going to check our springs. To make sure they are securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. They are properly stacked straight and there are none missing. Uh, we do not have a shock absorber on the back, but we do have a torsion bar on the back that we will check to make sure it is securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. Uh, we'll get into the U-bolts, which we cannot hardly see from the outside. Just explain to the examiner uh, where they're at and kind of point in there. We're going to check our U-bolts to make sure they are securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, and that the nuts are secured on the bottom. That brings us into the airline. We're going to check to make sure it is securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, or leaking, which pulls us right into our brake chamber. Securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, or leaking. Uh, we'll also check our push rod and slack adjuster on the rear of the vehicle. Make sure they are securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. Our pins are in place and they have keepers on the ends of them. We would chalk our wheels and pull on our slack adjuster. With the brakes released, we should not have more than one inch of travel. <clears throat> that brings us into our drums and linings. Just just like on the front, they're securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, and we would check our shoes to make sure they are not worn dangerously thin to less than a quarter of an inch. From there, we would check the space in between our tires. We have bud rims on these tires, so we would check our bud spacing. Make sure it's evenly spaced all the way around. Our tires are not touching, and there is nothing stuck in between the tires. <clears throat> We'll check the tires on the back of the vehicle the same way we checked them on the front. 
Checking for our five things, abrasions, bulges, cuts, tire depth on the back needs to be a minimum of 230 seconds. And then we're also gonna check the inflation of our tire with a tire gauge. We'll also check our valve stem, make sure it's not bent or twisted and that there's a metal cap on the end of it. <clears throat> we're also gonna check our rim, just like we did on the front. Make sure it's securely mounted, it's not cracked, bent, or broken, and there are no illegal welds. We'll also check our lug nuts all the way around. Make sure there are none missing. They're all nice and tight. They're not cracked, bent, or broken. There are no shiny threads or rust streaks, which would indicate that we could have a leak. We're also gonna check our axle seal on the back. Make sure all of our nuts are in place. No shiny threads or rust streaks, which would indicate that they could be leaking and there are no leaks which would puddle up on our rim. From there, we would go into our mud flap, check to make sure it's not cut or torn and that it is the proper height off of the ground. We're now back to the back of the truck. We're gonna check our hinge pin on our tailgate. Make sure the pin is in place with a keeper. We're also gonna check our locking jaw on our tailgate to make sure it's securely latched, it's not bent or broken. And we're also going to check our chain ties on the back of the truck to make sure they are securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. We're going to check our tail lights, brake lights, and uh, turn signals. Make sure they're the proper color of red and they are not cracked or broken. We're also going to check the door on the back of our tailgate to make sure it is securely latched locked into place it's not cracked bent or broken we're also going to check our chains make sure that none of them are stra stretched cracked or broken and that they are properly stowed away we'll also check our three clearance lights along the bottom here to make sure they're the proper color of red they are not cracked or broken if there's any reflectors on the rear of the vehicle do need to explain that you would check those to make sure they are not cut or ripped as well. So on this truck, we would check all of our reflectors to make sure they're visible and that they are not cut or torn in any way. That would conclude our Class B pre-trip on this truck. If you follow uh, what I've done here today, you should have no problems in passing your pre-trip for your Class B CDL. You can also go to your local BMV and pick up a CDL manual, which would help explain all the parts and pieces that we talked about today and uh, the whole procedure in obtaining your CDL license.